Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Neil and I are getting set up to teach days three and four of evidence-based pistol. You've heard me say that I've never seen a private citizen use any rounds from a reloaded magazine in a true and real gunfight. And that's true, I'm not lying about that. So why in the world do we teach reloading in day three of evidence-based pistol skills. Mountain Man Medical has name brand proven trauma medical supplies with a price match guarantee to ensure you get the right gear at the right price. Check them out at get-asp.com slash mountain man. So it's one of our lessons in evidence-based uh, defensive lessons that we teach in our seminar is that we've analyzed over 50,000 private citizen gunfights at this point. We have never seen a private citizen use any rounds from a reloaded magazine uh, in order to win a gunfight. We've seen several instances where they've run dry, yep. uh, and uh, but I haven't seen one that he ran dry and subsequently died for lack of a reload. Right. So in cop gunfights, they come into play all the time, but in private citizen gunfights, they don't because mission drives tactics, techniques, and procedures. Well, you know, it doesn't matter how big of a badass you are, you really don't want to get in a gunfight. And so if you come up and you're going to rob somebody and they pull a gun and start shooting at you, I mean, you just don't see it. it they breaks. split, everybody's yeah. gonna go. And so, you know, so it isn't gonna be a long drawn out thing like I think a lot of people think. And we've seen people use six. I've seen people use 10, I've seen 15. The most yep. I've seen in a private citizen gunfight is 16 because he was shooting a Glock 19 with 15 <laughs> plus in the magazine and one in the chamber, and that's where his gunfight ended. Quite frankly, he got kind of lucky the district attorney let him get away with that. <laughs> he only stopped there because he didn't have 17. Because he didn't have 17. <laughs> that was that gunfight. Out of you might, If you've been a fan of the channel for a long time or you've been to the seminar, Metro you know that was came out of Philly. <laughs> and uh, whew, he filled that boy in. Yep, let yep. me check, tell you. However, so, so and yet, here we are on the range and we're gonna teach reloading pretty quick. So why do we do that? Well, it's something you still have to be able to do if you're gonna to go to the range, you have to be able to do this. And if you can do it efficiently uh, and safely, you know, because we do see a fair amount of unsafe reloading just because, and potentially that's a, a con of us saying, hey, you're probably not gonna need this in a gunfight, so people maybe don't work on it much. The competition guys do all the time. There's yeah, another because, reason. Because if, that's a big piece to them, right? Yeah, and, if and, you are gonna be a competitive and, shooter, your reload times are going to matter. Now, yeah. if you're doing nothing but steel challenge, uh, you know, steel challenge are quick birdie, you know, quick and dirty burn downs, right? Yep. But if you're a USPSA shooter, you're an IDPA shooter, your reload technique is going to matter. In fact, for USPSA shooters, your reload technique matters way more than your draw. A lot. I mean, a way more, more than yeah. your draw, and you need to be very good at it. So, and that's a legitimate need for for that too. So, Absolutely. if you're a private citizen, and you're like, "But I need to practice my reloads because I'm a competitive shooter and I want to be a GM in USPSA." Yeah. If you want to move really from B to A, you better have a darn good reload. Yeah. If you can't reload, you're not going to be a B. You're, you're not going to. Yeah. You're not going to get there. So, I'm yeah. not saying it's not a skill to use. But when we're working on defensive uh, applications, when we're working on actual, you know, uh, defensive gunfighting. It's not gonna take advantage, and not, not gonna be a factor in your gunfight, but it is a factor when you're out on the range. Yeah, and absolutely. So if you're gonna do it a whole bunch, and in the next two days, uh, we're here the day before setting everything up, but in the next two days, our su students are gonna shoot probably 500 rounds easy. in two days, easy. Yep. They could shoot six or seven, depending on how much they wanna go. And, and so if you've got 15 rounds in a magazine, you're talking about 35, 40 reloads. So you're doing this again and again and again, and there's no reason to do it wrong. Right, doing it wrong is one thing, but doing it unsafely is what scares me. You know what I mean? And we see so many people that when they want to, when they go to do the reload, they're like, I, I can't let this mag hit the ground. Um, and so they're gonna, it'll fart around holding one mag or the other. And there's a way to do that safely too. I'm not saying you can't, but you know, when you're in the middle of something and especially if it's a drill type thing or potentially, you know, a friendly man on man competition kind of thing, people go to speed stuff up and that's when the dangerous stuff happens. Yep. So I'm gonna show you a couple things from this perspective, how I kind of put it together because you guys know, I don't carry a, a reload on my person uh, it, out on the streets right, because I don't care to. So when we come to class, and it's gonna be kind of hard for you to see, I just stick a reload in my waist, and okay. I do a couple things to it. Number one, my bullets are facing inboard. They're facing towards my belt buckle, because what that lets me do is pull this magazine out and, and reorient it and insert it in the gun, okay? So I do see students that are this way, and if, you're, if your bullets are backwards in here, then you what you have to do is pull that and then go underneath like this, and now I'm holding it like a beer can. The problem here, this works for a rifle mag, because the rifle mag sticks out 
out the bottom yeah. of the rifle, right? Especially if you're using standard capacity AR mags. But for the pistol, it inserts all the way down here. So now I got to halfway insert it, change my grip and finish. That takes time, makes it uh, less efficient and makes it more chances of me fumble farting it. Right, and there's a little bit of a pre-perceptive index here as if you go here, because you can put your finger on that end of the bullet and now you can reach right into the base of the gun and slide it in. One of our one of our favorite ways that we teach this, I don't have to teach you how to put, so I have, I've got this hand grippy around a gun, I have this finger here ready to go and I go, put those two together, put this finger inside the hole that you've created and I don't have to really think about that because my brain has, big nerd word, right. proprioceptive index, right? So I take that and, and when I'm gonna do that, I'll just stick it right here and just kind of leave it up. And I know people are like, well, it's kind of cheating, John. Well, again, we're doing something we're not gonna do in a defensive gunfight. And so it's concealed and all that stuff. I'll keep a second one in my back pocket too. Just because, you know, again, if I go up to yeah. the, when we go to the line, when we're students, you'll see me, I'll have three, four back here yeah, in that pocket. Exactly. Or if I'm wearing a dump pouch, I'll put a bunch in my dump pouch yep. uh, just, just for that. But, so uh, thinking about the technique, okay? I'm gonna show it to you. We'll turn you around the other way. I want the camera for right now under the shade, okay? Cause it's, it's warm and I don't wanna burn my camera up. So if I've got my gun out here going pew pew the, and my gun goes dry, then I'm gonna drop that magazine. For a lot of you, that means using the thumb. I don't use the thumb. I use my index finger because I use a paddle mag release like a grown up. So I'm gonna break my, my second hand off the gun, use my index finger for me or your thumb for, you know, you folks who use that side, that's fine. Then I'm gonna go get my spare source of ammunition. So what that means for my, my cover garment and those things, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more in a bit. I'm bringing the gun back here so that I can see it, so that it's easier for me to see. I don't like the idea of workspace or those things. Yeah. That's a little tactical and a little, you know, super ninja -y But it's me. a term that people know. It's a term that people yep. know. Okay, yep. fine, I bring this back so that I can see it. So I drop that magazine. Now I'm gonna come back here and just slide. So I kinda, you'll see me, I just kinda grab and, and pull up. Now I'm not trying for the hem, just like if I'm not holding my hem, I don't try to grab the hem because I punch myself in the nether bits. A same thing here. You so don't fun punch when you do that. That's so good, right? When you do it. Yeah, when, when somebody else does it. So I'm just going to then grab and clear and then pin and come down and get. Now, what does that look like here? So all I'm trying to do is get my finger down, down the edge there. And then all I have to do then is come up and I do like to look, see it into the gun. Just a brief glance. You don't gotta stare it down or whatever. Turn and look, put that in the gun. And I put it home like it stole something from me. Yep. What technique then do I use to get the, the slide dropped? I don't care. I don't care which one you use. If you use your, your slide stop, uh, your you know, slide stop lever, that's great by me if you can do that on a regular basis. If you then want a power stroke over the top, I know some people in law enforcement circles are yep. super dogmatic that the power stroke is the only way to do it. I disagree, but if you want to do it that way, it doesn't hurt my feelings a bit. If you want a slingshot, you want to slam that in there and then, and then bring the gun uh, slide over to you and slingshot it and go back in the fight, great. I will tell you what I find for me, and you got to play with this to work out what's best for you is, my HK tends to auto forward. Mine does too. And, and so what that means is, is that I tend to ride that slide stop just a little bit. My thumb kind of rides the top. And when I hit that magazine home like it, I mean it, my slide goes home it and goes. it works. And some people are like, but John, it won't work in the moment. I've never had it fail. Uh, if it doesn't work, then you just do the other thing. Right, so, uh, so if know, it doesn't so work, I've had, click. I've had that before where I slam it, and, or, you know, I might not slam it just quite hard enough um, where it doesn't go, then okay, then, I, and what I do is I come across the top and I slap my SRO. So what I meant by that was when I said it doesn't oh. work, it's like the slide goes home and I've got an empty. Oh yeah, that never I've happens. never seen no, that happen. No, no. Mine goes home it, and worked every time. Now, if I slam it home and my slide is still back, then I just hit my thumb. Now you use, you slap your SRO. Yeah. Me, I use my thumb. Well, because it's that big. It's like a big handle up there, so. Now, here's a lesson for you. I think this is one of those learning things that you just gotta find what your self-organization yep. works best. Yep. Not, I'm not dogmatic about these techniques at all. Mm -mm. Let's watch it a couple times and uh, see how it goes, shall we? All right, so I'm gonna show you my kind of uh, slow and dirty. Huh, maybe it should be quick and dirty. <laughs> yeah. Slow and dirty, it's a Tyler and Neil sex tape. <laughs> uh, oh, we're gonna get letters. Yep. <laughs> So I'm gonna show you my technique. Hey, can I just say, we are not really big into the competitive shooting world and I am not Tim Heron. No. And you are not Riley Bowman. And and listen, so you should be subscribed to both their channels, right? So yep. Riley Bowman and Tim Heron are, are two of my friends who are really, really good at this. I see, I watch Tim Heron doing sub-second reloads. Yeah, he's a Chris monster. Bean, there's a ton of Chris people Bean, that are way. And you see other folks on that. I, I'm talking for those of us that are defensive shooters, 
kind of, you know, wait, I'm trying to fix my technique on this stuff, okay? So I'm gonna show it to you deliberately, yep. right? So I don't believe slow is smooth and smooth is fast. I don't believe that. I believe that deliberate builds intention and intention then can be automated and sped up, yep. okay? Yep. So all I'm gonna do again, so I feel this idea is I'm actually not gonna shoot the steel because I don't want any spall coming back on my expensive camera, okay? So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna shoot a minute of berm on this one, but you're, you gonna, go. you're gonna understand what I'm doing here, okay? So, aha, there is an empty. I felt the difference in the recoil impulse on the gun. Cool, the gun is empty, okay? Now, again, I am going to release the magazine while I go get my spare. See it, insert it, and look at what happened. Mine went auto forward. Happens all the time. If not, I'd have just used that, go back to work again, and go to work. Okay, let's see that. Let me safely, carefully, reluctantly holster. Uh, let me pop that. Let's set it up again. Yep. Okay, there's all that. So uh, again, I, I now I'll show you with, with uh, you know, a little bit more rapidity. I'm not, I'm not the reload master, okay? And I'm not the guy that's, that's gonna work on that, the sub second. I'm working from concealment, not out of a holster here, okay? So again though, if I'm like, there it is. Had to, had to see again, the, the delay at the end there was because I was just gonna point it in and I didn't decide <laughs> to press the trigger until yep. I was too late. So, so that's how I do it. Let's watch Neil with his. Oh, no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. All right, so I'm empty and I think I got one in the, yeah. So a lot of times based on the way that I grip this thing, I don't get a slide lock. So a lot of times I get a click uh, and so I've got to kind of work through both different ways. And like you, I'm not Tim Heron and I'm not Chris Bean and those guys. Um, I just kind of work. Now I work let, out let of my- Let me also say, his grip, because the way he grips that gun nice and high, he doesn't get a lock on uh, that gun. I sometimes don't either, Yep. and that's okay. Again, in a defensive context, it doesn't cost you anything. If you're a competitor, you'd need to fix that grip. You know, a very wise man once told me that I'd rather have 18 great gripped shots than 18 not so great and a faster reload. Mm, yeah, that's a great point. So I'll, I'll take it. So now I go out of the front pocket here. I don't tuck into that waistline because you got the skinny little tummy, I don't. Um, Yes. See how this guy losing some weight here. I have so, worked really hard on that. <laughs> so I work out of that. Now I keep the rounds, the, the bolts facing straight forward straight in my forward. pocket. That way, the if it starts to slip down in there, the, get that little lip. Yeah, the, the lip of the mag will I hold it I do the there. same thing, but in reverse on my back pocket. Yeah. So it's just sticking out and then that way I can grab it. Yep. And I got my finger like. Exactly. So, yeah. so then I'm working from there. So if I aim out here and shoot, now see that time I did get you got it to lock. slide lock. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just hit that at the same time and go right back at it. Yep. Now you notice he didn't come way back here. He didn't we didn't we didn't come back here and you know gun to the sky or anything like that. It was just pop. There it goes and go forward, you know? Yeah, I, you know, and I think depending on who you are, I, I mean, I'm sure I could be way, way more efficient with this. Sure. I, I, there's a zero doubt in my mind, but I, I think, you know, for what I'm doing and where I'm at in, in my journey right now, my reloads aren't what I'm focused on. So, and so when I start doing some competition, that'll probably change. For those of you who are looking to be anything in the competitive world, don't watch this video. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, go watch Tim, go watch Max Michelle, go watch Ben Stager, go watch those guys, okay? Hey, well, let, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say right now, Chris Bean, make a reload video. Christopher Bean needs My to be making that. more reload yeah. videos. Guys, ridiculous fast. Uh, but for those of us that are like, hey, I just, what, what, what we see all the time is here it is, and now my reload's in my strong side pocket. So again, support side is where yeah. you want it. Uh, I want it with the bullets facing inboard or completely out so that I can get a consistent spot to get in there. And again, just see it proprioceptive index to put yep. that here, go back to work. Pretty simple stuff. And you'll see that as we teach students this weekend. Thanks, bro. You bet.